You ready? Yeah. Feeling good? All right. I'll say a few things. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hello. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm Rafael, uh, membership director at the Albany Y, so I know some of you. Uh, good to see you all. I uh, just want to say before we get started, uh, thanks to Paul and the Albany Library for continuing to put this lovely event on. Uh, thanks to friends of the Albany Library as well. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to tell you what we have next month, which is Monday, June 10th. Uh, the topic is Transforming Grief into Beauty. Um, and the gentleman who is doing this, his name is Day Shilkret, and it's all about mourning altars. So if you don't know what that is, grab a flyer on the way out. Uh, there's an amazing book here at the library that you can check out as well. Um, today, we are honoring labor through photographs. And without further ado, I'm, I'm going to get uh, Mr. Joseph Blum up here and get us started. So here we go. Thanks, Joe. Thank you very much. Um, let's see if I can remember how to do this. <laughs> um, I was also going to give my thanks to Paul and Raphael and the friends of the library and the Albany Library and for all of you for coming. So. Um, this slideshow talk is a work in progress. Um, it's my first comprehensive attempt to review and understand my photographic work over the last several decades. Uh, my project from the beginning has been to document and honor workers as they perform their labor. I began with the work I was doing, and for the most part, I have mostly documented the work of the metal trades and construction work. These are the workers who construct most of the built environment that we usually take for granted. I've been able to get behind the scenes at a great many sites to show how this environment is constructed. Wherever the workers went, I followed with my camera. Wherever possible, I tried to photograph the work from their perspective. When that was not possible, I moved as close to the work as I could without interfering with or endangering either the workers or myself. <clears throat> Almost without exception, I was welcomed into their world. I tried to document the skill, courage, stamina, knowledge, physical and psychological strength required to carry out these tasks. And rather than talk anymore, I would just show the images um, with short descriptions about um, some of the sites where they were taken. So this first image, um, my project to document non labor and the workers who do it began about 40 years ago while I was working as a boilermaker welder at the American Bridge plant in South San Francisco. I hid a camera, a Nikon F, loaded with Kodak Triax and white, black and white film under my work clothes and surreptitiously shot this photograph, which I call a self-portrait, as I was doing the exact same work in an adjacent pipe. And um, um, the American Bridge Plant in South San Francisco, the industrial city where I worked for nine years, is a microcosm of the industrial development of California. The plant opened in 1913 as an entrepreneurial enterprise, the Shaw Batcher Pipe Works, and it closed permanently in 1983 as the fabricating division of United States Steel. The plant was converted into a shipyard during both world wars, but it should be best remembered for its civilian contributions, especially for fabricating both lines of the Hetch Hetchy water system, which carries Sierra Nevada snow melt to the two and a half million people in the Bay Area. Its work has also fabricated much of the infrastructure components of the Northern California and huge pressure vessels for oil and gas developments in Alaska. So um, this was a very small pipe and cramped and um, you know, I just whipped the camera out and shot it and um, was glad to find out that it actually, <laughs> I actually got it. So this was one of the pressure vessels that went to the North Slope of Alaska. We built six of these of uh, very thick steel, and they, they weighed 350 t tons apiece. Um, um, the Bay Area also had many forge shops, including Coulter Steel in Emeryville, and several others in Berkeley and San Jose. Uh, many were Boilermaker Union shops, which I was able to photograph when I was the local's dispatcher. So work for Boilermakers, um, which had at one time been a huge 
thing in the Bay Area shrunk considerably, especially when they started doing all the ship building and repair um, across the sea. Um, so this was some of the old shops. So I ended up being the dispatcher for the union as it was fading into oblivion. Um, and um, the interesting thing I thought about this one is that he's got ear protection, but no eye protection. And that's a pretty hot ingot right there. Um, um, these are uh, a, a, a blacksmith and apprentice uh, being shown how to work um, an ingot under the hammer. Um, this is the worker operating the heavy hammer. Um, and just recently, I went back to Coulter. They had gone out of business, but they're back in business and much smaller. I thought what was interesting about this is we've got not one but two clocks, um, but the Oakland Raiders um, <laughs> written on the door there. And those are the work orders. Um, and this for me, this, uh, this 40 years for me has gone from black and white photography to digital. Um, and so this was a very scary photograph for me. I was almost going to eliminate this whole part of it because I was afraid of how bright this was. But I sort of learned in the darkroom that you could deal with that. <laughs> um, I'm sorry? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> That's well, yeah, coming and going. Um, this is, uh, we also had some shops down in Sarah Cl uh, Santa Clara. This is a father and son uh, working in un ingot under a big hammer. I just thought the hammer was quite beautiful. And there's their um, work order. And this guy is operating the hammer. Um, and, fine, um, and this is um, working in alumina ingot under the hammer at Coulter Steel in Emeryville. And uh, I just thought it was interesting the way the smoke came off of, came off of that. Um, the Union Iron Works is the oldest non-Native American business on the West Coast. It began as a blacksmith shop on Montgomery Street in 1849, moved to south of the slot as a foundry a few years later, where the Bay Bridge empties out into San Francisco down there were all these foundry shops. And they were fueled by the demand for stamp mills and other equipment for the silver mines of the Comstock in Nevada the Union Iron Works, and uh, they grew very rapidly. In 1883, the Union Iron Works moved to the Potrero District and established the world-class shipyard on the San Francisco Bay. This yard built Dewey's fleet for the Spanish-American War and paved the way for US imperialism's ventures into the Pacific, which unfortunately persists to this day. Um, the yard was bought by Bethlehem Steel Corporation in 1906 and built more than 150 ships during the two world wars. It also built the tubes that carry bar trains under the bay. Um, for the past 50 years, the yard has been a ship repair facility and it closed permanently in May 2017. Um, I worked there for many years as well. Um, but since I had no seniority as I did at American Bridge, they wanted you, when they wanted you 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and when they didn't want you, they definitely didn't want you. Um, this is um, a ship I actually worked on, but this is the um, workers attaching the rig rigging to the propeller of the United States Navy ship Mercy, which had been, a Rica, had been originally built in San Diego and was a, um, an oil tanker. So they gutted the whole thing and, and, and put a hospital into it. And I was there when we built a, um, um, on the job before this. Um, but it's 25 tons of bronzed aluminum um, and they were taking it off to, to balance it like you balance your, the tire, your tire. Yeah, <laughs> it was a little bit more difficult than... <laughs> um, and this was the crew, which was mostly, uh, the rigging crew was mostly uh, Samoans um, in the years that I was there. And um, we used to have a lot of really in interesting banter with them. They were, I I any one of them could pick me up and throw me over the side. But once in a while, the four, four of them would grab me and pretend to do it. And then they set me down and I said, it took four of you to take on <laughs> this little guy. <laughs> but it, it, it was... Um, this is sandblasting the anchor chains. So you know you see the ships come in and the anchor chains are pulled up. Well, those chains go in this thing at the, at the uh, bow of the ship at the point there called a, the um, chain locker. And uh, we had to do a repair job, the worst job I ever had in the shipyard, a repair in the chain lockers. You know, these things going in and out smash up things all the time. So they had to be rebuilt. But it's extremely narrow and very tall. 
the whole height of the ship, especially in that front bow end. So you'd put platforms in there, scaffolding to work. If you ended up on the bottom, you got everybody's stuff that came from yeah. above. You know, welding rods, slag, something fall down. If you were on the top, you got nothing but everybody's smoke. So even though you might be wearing a respirator, the worst job ever. But, um, but I understood that they were going to lay the chains out on the deck, um, back and forth. And so I wanted to get them uh, sandblasting and, um, and painting. When I took this one sandblasting, um, it, it pitted my glasses. <laughs> um, but uh, all of these, all of these prints were, um, I printed all of these. Development printed all of these. Oh, except for the very first one, um, the self-portrait. Those first two, um, um, my son's mother, my, my wife, <laughs> um, had a studio in San Francisco. And I shot that roll of film, and she developed it for me. And I didn't look at it for, uh, for quite a long time. And then one day went in with that picture you saw in the, on the front and saw it and said, oh my god. So, but everything else I developed and printed. Um, OK. So the port of Oakland opened the United States as a market for the Chinese-made post-Panamac port cranes at the dawn of the 21st century. So ZPMC, who built these cranes, cornered the world market. When the Panama Canal, when they started building ships that were too big for the Panama Canal, they were called post-Panamax crane uh, uh, ships. And the whole thing about a ship in, the, in, the, in there, they want the ship to be in the port for no time at all. They want to be able to unload it. The cranes that they had previously, you would have to put the ship in and turn it around to be able to get it all off. So ZPMC cornered the world market for post-Panamax cranes that were tall enough so that the ship would not have to be turned. So um, I got into seeing this thing come through, and then I talked to the woman who was in charge of this, whether I could go to China and photograph them making these things. And she said, oh, sure. <laughs> so, um, but here's, uh, so the, the gang originally that, that um, um, these things are 27-story high cranes. You've all seen them. And they sailed first under the Golden Gate Bridge and then under the main span of the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. And they had to stop the traffic on that. They had six inches of clearance. Um, and they were unloaded and installed at the port by a mixed uh, crew of Chinese and American iron workers. And the mixing of the crew was not without tensions and the things about um, compensation, stuff like that. But uh, by the end of the job, there seemed to be mutual respect and even a measure of solidarity and connection between the workers. And you can see this iron worker here has both the American plastic hard hat and the bamboo hard hats, um, which the Chinese workers came with. They are extremely strong, um, but they have no suspension system in them. And so they're not great. And they were just going through the transition to change to from bamboo to so he made friends with one of these, and they invited him to come to China. And he went, but I got there before him. So, <laughs> so, um, so I was able to photograph the work of constructing the cranes at the huge new ZPMC Changjing Island plant at the mouth of the Yangtze near headquarters in Shanghai. It was operating 24-7 and employed thousands of workers, including a large proportion of women. The plant fabricates port cranes, bridge components, and large steel components for projects in countries all over the world. And um, so here you can see um, that the safety equipment is, you know, it's a straight rope instead of a bungee, which is, it may stop you, but you have a good chance of breaking your back. Um, and you can see we've got um, change, whoops, we've got uh, changing of the hats. Um, this was in the machine shop. I call this passing on the, on the craft. Um, he was the master mechanic showing um, this younger woman um, machinist um, the correct angle for a tool. This photograph was interesting. He was making the big drums for these port cranes. And the interesting thing about this is the serial number on this, on this uh, lathe was 000001. So, <laughs> It's the idea of seeing a brand new um, 
country, you know, industrializing in, in a much different rate. Um, then there's uh, <laughs> the question of how safe is that? Um, um, bamboo strong ladders, a bamboo hard hat, but no tie off. And that was a good ways up. And this is even another one. Um, I don't know which is worse, smoking the cigarette, no eye protection, no tie off, or bamboo hard hat. <laughs> you could take your choice. <laughs> um, I went there. Well, they came in the turn of the century, I believe. They opened the market side, maybe 2001. Because I sort of have this in, in, in alphabetical. In 2003, the Zampa Bridge um, over the Carquinas opened in 2003. So I was photographing that for quite a while. So I think that was just before then. Um, anyway, in 2003, the first new suspension bridge in the United States in 30 years was constructed over, across the Carquina Strait, linking Vallejo with the company Sugar Town of Crockett on the main road connecting the Bay Area with Sacramento. Equally significant, the new span was named for um, uh, a lifelong legendary, a lifelong rank and file iron worker um, and bridge man, Al Zampa. So the official name of that bridge is the Al Zampa Memorial Bridge. He worked on almost all, he worked on the first one in 1928, which I believe is that one there, which was then taken down. Whoops, I did the wrong. This one here. Um, and he worked on the Bay Bridge and was in the halfway to hell gang. Those are the people who fell into the safety net on that thing and seriously injured himself, came back and became a connector again. And there was a play made about him, The Ace, and there was a, a TV documentary. Um, and, um, and his sons and grandsons, uh, his great-grandson made a brief appearance on the Bay Bridge. Um, so here is, um, um, this is mostly obviously a male-dominated trade, but here is um, um, a woman iron, iron worker um, on uh, installing cable bands on um, on the Zamper, these are temporary cable bands on the on the Zampa Bridge. Um, this is the uh, cable spinning work cart on the on the on the Al Zampa Bridge. Um, this was a traditional um, suspension bridge in which the cables were spun one wire at a time. The Bay Bridge, you'll see later, was done differently. Um, and here's a worker taking, uh, under a full moon, on the um, um, Vallejo side, taking uh, the wire, one of the wires off. And you can see they go in, they come in here. That's how they're separated before they're made into a cable. Unfortunately, he uh, died not so long after in, an, in a uh, motorcycle accident. I was glad I had a number of pictures of him working to give to his family. Um, in the middle of the night, over the railroad tracks where um, the dead fish is, and um, 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 I'm sorry? Nantucket. And the Nantucket down below, which I guess is now mostly gone, <laughs> which is probably good it was deteriorating. <laughs> um, but this was shot. The interesting thing is I never wanted to flash these guys. They all said, oh, no worry about it. But I never wanted to flash them. So this was shot with 3,200 film for any of those people who know about that. Push the 6,400. Um, and he was sort of the alpha male on this thing. And um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, this was um, a Caltrans inspector. Um, this is where the decks. So the decks on the uh, on the on the Zampa Bridge were lifted in the in the in the traditional way, and um, she's she's um, checking the connection for the deck to the uh, cable to the suspender cables. Um, this woman was a laborer who came from Mexico and said she was going to spend and was sending all sorts of money back and was going to spend another ten or twelve years doing this and then going to go home. And this is some guy who wandered onto the site and decided he thought he could climb the cable. <laughs> and he made it, I guess. <laughs> so beginning around 2000, there was a mini boom in high-rise construction in downtown San Francisco. Lynn Bonfield, the uh, founder and director of the Labor Archives and Research Center 
at San Francisco State University suggested to the leadership of Local 377, whose shirt I have on, that I photograph their members at work. Um, they were pretty flush at this period and were you know, contributing to maintain this fabulous archive. So they agreed and facilitated my access to various construction projects around the city, including the Four Seasons Hotel, 560 Mission Street, and 55 Second Street. So this is the Four Seasons Hotel, and I call this photograph um, strolling into Chinatown because this is Grant Avenue here. Now, on, uh, he's already tied off, as you can see. And I had uh, photographs of him coming and then taking his his um, um, bungee to um, um, to tie off. Um, if he were to fall there, he would fall two stories. When they're out at the edge, it's 26 stories. Interestingly, in the background is the old Bank of America building, which I think is now just 550 or 505 California since they moved to, and and a sliver of the pyramid, which until recently was the tallest building in the city. Um, so these are cross beams, and you can see how much, <laughs> how much there is to walk on there. So he is going to walk across this, right? So the, the, the piece is, is brought up with these choker cables. As soon as they make, they call making it. These guys, all they're supposed to do is put bolts in enough to hold it, and they move on. They're the connectors, and they, they just want them hanging iron. So he's going to now bend over and un untie the choker cables and throw them down two floors to where the rest of the raising gang will hook it up to the next piece. Um, there is no place to tie off. Uh, but you are right on this other one. These days now, you'll see when I show you the Salesforce tower, every one of these pieces comes up with a cable on it. This is only 15 years back. That was not the case. And these are too small and ridiculous to do. I mean, they. Were there I, many accidents? No, very, very. Um, <laughs> I. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you can see, um, Louis is pretty happy with himself. He's got his bolts and he's sashaying down the. <laughs> um, uh, this is 55 Second Street. I just thought it really interesting, the diagonals. And once in a while, you find a hidden worker. Um, and they're putting in these diagonals at 55 Second Street. This is welding up there. Here again, we have what used to be the tall buildings before Benioff came along. You've got the old Bank of America and a sliver of the um, pyramid. Um, when they weld the columns, they they have a column chair. So this is like on the top of the building, and it's you know, 20, 30 floors down. They weld a chair to the outside of the column, tie off to this, <laughs> climb over, sit on that chair for a while, weld this together. And then um, when they're done, they've only welded one side. They just rip the chair back off. The weld is very strong, pushing this way, has no strength going the other way. Um, the other thing about these buildings is they're glass and, and they're um, full of um, 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 ooh. sorry um, curtain wall sorry which is the so they use mixed gangs of iron workers and glazers to put in the um, the curtain wall um, so they bring them up on these lifts and then slide them into position against the steel framing. And this was the first photograph that uh, I, somebody sent this off to Engineering News Record, which is McGraw Hills, the largest circulating construction uh, magazine in the country. And somebody entered this. Uh, they called me up one day and said that I had been selected for the photos of the year or something. And I said, well, how did you get the photograph? They said, well, you don't want us to use it? I said, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> But actually, I met somebody. I, I have made almost no money on any of these jobs, but I met the guy who was the, in charge of the glass on this thing, and he wanted photographs, and he bought photographs from me, and he's the one that entered this photograph. 560 Mission Street was very interesting. You know, you see all these cranes, uh, mostly tower cranes, all over the place. 
At 560 Mission Street, the buildings were too close. They could not use a, a, um, um, a tower crane, so they used a derrick crane. In a derrick crane, the operator of the crane is, sits on the ground. He sees nothing. He is just instructed by the radio man up on top. Um, but constructing the derrick crane, I thought, was extremely interesting. So these guys are pulling, right? So they're pulling this thing in. <laughs> so I saw them doing it and just laid on the ground and, you know, shot up um, at them. Now, when you get to the top of the building, um, <laughs> this is, um, wait, I'm a page behind. This is, um, this is, an, a, this is a guy on his first, first job, iron worker on his first job, and he's um, climbing the column to the roof screen. Um, so somebody asked about being tied off and all. Now, they, these beams come with a, um, with a cable, uh, with a retractor on it, and they hook up and then they climb it. But at the top, there's only way to get up there is to climb it. So he went up there, um, and they're installing the windscreens there. The interesting thing about this guy is sometime either later in this day, he almost got knocked over by one of these pieces coming in. And he was right in my frame when I did it. So I have a picture of him being turned over. But he wrapped his legs around the, uh, the beam coming in. He was tied off, and nothing happened. But I did follow him around the rest of the day to see if I could get the halo. Uh, but I, I, it never came out in any of the photos. Um, now, the rookie decided, I'll just, I don't want to carry the. <laughs> <laughs> my eight pound beater down, I'll just drop it down. So this is on the 26th or 27th floor at second in mission. It's a good thing he caught it. Because <laughs> who knows what would have happened. Um, but I just like the idea of all of these things have, you know, these things in the background, which are just, um, I mean, I'm completely interested in how they're doing, but um, the background is, is something. So people know about topping off ceremonies. So when a building is done, they put a tree and a flag. Everybody gets to sign the beam, and then they hoist it up. Um, this was that young kid who, uh, who was dropping the hammer on his first job. So he came in a sports coat. <laughs> on Fridays, they have Hawaiian shirt day. So Louie and Mike, who were the, um, and by the way, I, on, on most of these, and especially when I got to the bridge, I had the names of virtually of every worker that was on there. Earlier on, I didn't always have that. Um, but anyway, Louis, these two guys were the connectors. This guy was the phone man. This was the raising gang foreman. And, um, and I thought it would be great to have a picture of me standing on that. Um, and just as I thought they were going to let me do that, the superintendent came around the corner and said, without even looking at me, don't even think about it. <laughs> Here's their gang box and people's name, names on it. But I did get a photo. I did have them sign this photo. So that's high rises. The conservatory. Are we okay on time? Yes. The conservatory of flowers in Golden Gate Park, built in 17, 1879, is the oldest structure in Golden Gate Park. Storms and old age threatened the integrity of the building, and it was closed to the public in 1995. It reopened in September 2003, following an eight-year, $25 million rehabilitation project that included disassembly and reconstruction of the structure, lead abatement, and seismic strengthening. And I was lucky to photograph some of that work. So this is putting in the cupola. Um, this is detailed work on various parts of it. It was all very carefully restored. Um, this was a glazier. Um, two electricians um, passing a tool in that beautiful building and the cooperation of labor. Oh, whoops. <laughs> and, that's, and that's that. Okay. So, so now comes the bridge. Um, for many years, I had been scheming to document the construction of the newest span of the Bay Bridge if I could figure out how to gain access. I managed to talk my way onto the ship that was taking soil samples for the test piles for the Skyway, and then onto the barge crane, which was actually drove the test piles um, into the Bay. 
This turned out to be the break I needed as that contract got me, that contact got me invited onto the site when the actual construction began a year or two later. So I was thus transformed from an itinerant photographer moving from project to project into the photo troll who inhabited the bridge for the next 15 years, as I believe Brenda could attest to. <laughs> um, and um, although the bridge became the most expensive public works project in California history and very controversial, my goal remained the same. And as a result, I was able to document how several thousand workers, the bridge builders, were able to transform the plans and drawings of the architects and engineers into a living structure of steel and concrete that thousands of people depend upon daily. So this is the old troll who was put up by the iron workers in 1989 after Loma Prieta. And there is a new troll, which you can see from the bike lane. Um, and if people want to know later, I could try and tell them where it is. Um, so now we're in the Bay Bridge photos. Um, This is a pile driver foreman, Gordy Crocker, supervising the lowering of a Bay Bridge Skyway uh, um, pile. Um, these are the pile drivers guiding a 220-ton pile section in preparation for stabbing into the, the foundation. So this thing has a lip on it. This one pile has already been driven, and the top of it, by the hammer, driven into the mud. It's, the top of it is cut off, fresh-headed. Then they wrap the, um, the pile. Um, they're about um, eight feet in diameter. They wrap the pile to heat it up so that the metal will expand. And then they stab it, the second pile, into it. And this thinner piece here is where they weld into and connect them. And once they start welding it, they weld it until it's done, maybe 24 hours. Um, this is inside the pile at the top. I asked this guy, I said, all sorts of people photograph. He said, no, nobody ever came in here. He was working off of a platform, um, which clearly went down, you know, a couple of hundred feet below. So he had to tie off. And when I got in there with him, we had to tie off into two separate places. We were tied off to the, to the thing we were standing on and to a piece outside but he was doing stud welding inside the top of, because all of these things are going to be poured with concrete. Um, these are um, iron workers removing rigging from the column cage for the self-anchoring suspension bridge on, on Yerba Buena Island. Um, 16E was the first foundation for the Skyway. When they went to pick it up, it looked like it was going to begin to separate. They had been very carefully had put stops in so it couldn't go too far. So these two guys were sent out to repair this. So he is taking this number 18. You can see the size of this rebar. He can't even get his hand around. 18 rebar. The guy inside is holding the holdback rope for him. And he is going to connect it to these two, two clamps there. And the learning curve, that was the only time they made a mistake on this. So they reinforced this and redid it and after that. But I had, to, I had been down at the bottom when they were doing it and had left and turned around and saw that they were doing this and found a place to climb up and be almost at the same height with them. So I thought that was pretty cool. And of course, there's the old bridge, which no longer exists. Um, this is um, iron workers, um, Chris Kane feeding rebar into the column cage on one of the uh, piers. So this pier here is going to end up, there's ones that have already been done and have concrete on them. So these are just rebar cages. And the thing about these things is that they're not welded, they're tied. So if they start to come apart, you could lose it all. Um, I, what to say, these are iron workers installing a column cage to a pier column on the Skyway. And to me, it's just, you know, Choreography dancing on the iron. Yeah. What kind of camera are you using? This is um, a Nikon F. Uh, or it, possibly the Pentax, but I think it's the 35. Um, so these cages are built with this collective labor, right? So on the bottom, you can see these, these pieces of rebar, which were nowhere near the, as big as those other ones I was showing you. 
they go um, brought in on, these, on a track that rolls, and then you line up and place them and then tie them. So I call this building the new bridge in the shadow of the old. So it's this continuous collective labor. You have these guys have wire that they pull out, tie, and then they stand the then they stand them up and they eventually get joined together. So for the uh, these are for landing on Yerba Buena Island where the self anchoring suspension bridge lands on. So there were 24 of these um, eight columns, three high. Um, Again, not a lot of women workers out there, but whenever I, you know, tried to photograph them, whenever they were there, there's a woman pile driver um, putting the, um, um, no, she's uh, the, the form for the concrete. So she's bolting together the form to, for the concrete pour. And talk about rivets. Um, they replaced all the rivets on the west side of the bay, on the Bay Bridge, cut off all the heads that he's wearing, you know, this is all lead, so um, he's cutting off that rivet and it was replaced with um, high strength bolts. I think now we go to color. Okay, so these are the color shots. So that's the Skyway that's already been built and this is the foundation pile for the, for the, um, for the self anchored suspension bridge at dawn. So this lifting device will go in those holes. They'll pick this thing up and begin driving this for the foundation uh, pile for the tower. Um, this is a, installing a whale frame for the foundations. So see, that's the end of the Skyway being held up with these temporary things. The self-anchored suspension bridge is going to join it there. And this is the foundation E2, and it's on top of this foundation over there in this corner that you will find the troll. Um, there is a Corey, another woman worker here, um, and there she is uh, cutting access holes for the lifting device um, out in the middle of the bay. Um, people comment all the time. I used to fight with her all the time about smoking. People say, isn't that dangerous? I said, well, she's in the middle of the bay doing hot work. So it may be dangerous to smoke, but <laughs> not from any reason to, of explosion or anything like that. Um, this is inside the piles. So the piles, these are the welds there. Inside the piles are welded to foundation boxes. Foundation boxes are welded to the piles. And um, so I got into the pile and got underneath them to sort of, so you can see it's E2, W, 3B, it's been UT, it is okay, and all these are inspection things. And this was the Oakland Tribune ran this story about how they were not doing this right, um, which turned out when they finally cut one out um, and took it for inspection was almost a perfect weld. Um, this is a painter um, painting part of the Skyway. Um, this, is, um, this is a pile driver Doug using a thermal lance to cut f false work. So all of this work, this false work in construction, that's work that's steel that's put in there in order to put additional steel, which then has to be removed. So there were these huge things at the bottom of that foundation area. And we went down there and spent like eight hours. You can see this guy here, his job is to light his thermal torch. This, this thermal torch cuts through steel at an extraordinary rate but it gets consumed. It's got oxygen going in there and extreme magnesium or some other really high, um, high temperature um, uh, uh, that cuts, the, cuts through the steel. It has to be lit by an oxyacetylene torch. So his job was to, to light it for this guy who cut through this. And we were down there, you know, eight or 10 hours. Um, and I don't think anybody else wanted to go in there. <laughs> this is... Um, this is um, constructing on, on Yerba Buena Island on the Skyway where it goes from the self-anchoring bridge into the tunnel and all to the west side of the bridge of them constructing a rebar cage. And I just came driving onto the island one day and saw them doing this and thought, look at the, especially this guy, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so I thought people would be interested in it. 
So this is pouring concrete. Um, and, you know, there's gender issues on all this, and there are um, racial issues on all of this. Um, the laborers here are much more brown um, than some of the other crafts. The bridge is built by hand, and even though it's, we're, what, almost 20 years into the 21st century, um, stuff is done by hand. Usually they have gloves on it, so when I saw that um, um, I'm spacing on his name. When I saw that oh, a JR um, was using a come along without that, I thought this would be interesting. Um, again, Audrey, a pile driver working um, for, uh, on the self-anchored suspension bridge. Um, um, a small number of women workers. This photograph was, so this is the temp, so th what was different about this the self-anchored suspension bridge is that you had to build two bridges to build one. So this is the, this is the um, foundation so that the decks could be placed on this and all bolted together, and then all of this stuff disappears. So they are bolting that up. And um, I just thought it was amazing collective labor here um, and um, this work of climbing over the side, doing this split I can't do on the ground. Um, and bolting these holes together. Um, so that's his fall protection. And then they also have these things around their waist, which are, um, maybe it'll be in, a, in another picture, um, that, that allows them to, uh, to take the weight. It's not for safety, but it allows them to free up their hands. Oh, there it is, OK. So that's his positioner hook. Okay, so he's positioned there, but it's not considered safe. That's the safety, the dual bungee cords. And there are two of them because you want to have 100% tie off. So if he goes to climb over, he takes one off and attaches it someplace else before he goes to the next place. They later claimed that this guy was not tied off, but it turns out not to be the case. <laughs> um, I got to go to China. This is the, um, this is the uh, ship leaving Shanghai with 4,800 tons of steel. These are the columns. So each one of these was like 1,700, the bottom four sections uh, of the tower legs. Um, and then I beat the ship to San Francisco. And here are those same, <laughs> here are those same uh, tower legs going under. Um, so the, the interesting thing about this photograph to me is that um, this thing got, got in the frame just as I had this thing framed to go under the bridge, right? So this is a, a New Deal era bridge, and now we have 5,000 tons of Chinese steel coming in under the bridge. And lo and behold, this thing decides to cross in front of my path, which I thought was terrible. But the fact of the matter is, that this is the USS Potomac, <laughs> which is FDR's presidential yacht. So it made the picture 100 times better than what it was. The Potomac is going that way, and the steel is going this way. <laughs> so when I zoomed in and said, oh my god, it's the Potomac, I was very happy. Because we actually took the Potomac. I was on the Potomac. We took the Potomac up when they were opening the Zampa Bridge. They had a party, and we went up on that. This crane, this, uh, this crane operator, who is also the, one of the crane operators on the Salesforce Tower, um, so built off the um, side of the uh, temporary tower on the bridge was this small crane to lift up the smaller pieces. And I asked if I could go up, and, and they said, yeah, sure, go ahead. I hadn't realized that climbing that 180 feet with my backpack was going to be <laughs> quite as as arduous as it was. But it was great to get up there, and then you got a scene like this. So um, there's no Salesforce tower, but there is the pyramid. And so they're bringing this temporary truss. These guys are here waiting for this temporary truss to be bolted here. Um, and um, you know, those are some of the column cages we saw before. This is the, the road deck. 
Okay, let's do that. <laughs> um, this was this was very heavy. This was one of the very heaviest pieces um, uh, deck section that we were putting in because the self-anchoring suspension bridge has the um, the cables go into that section. So they built this very elaborate lifting rigging, and I was extremely interested in it and followed them around. So that'll give you an idea of the kind of effort taken. Renee pulling this pin, which weighs about 250 pounds. Um, and they're dropping off. Those were the lifting devices there, and now they're going to use it, use this lifting device in a different way. And one of the ways was to pick up this deck section, um, which Stanley, who I saw just recently working on the repair at the Salesforce Tower and was, um, and was on the raising gang at the Salesforce Tower, just him pushing on that can influence and move this 1,750 ton deck section. So it's on that crane with those lifting things that I showed you a minute ago. Um, this is concrete pouring um, on Yerba Buena Island. Um, and that's, so that's the crane I was in, right? So at a certain point, you, there are certain places where you could cross over and then go up, up the leg of that, of that uh, crane. But that's the crane I was in. And um, this is, this is, they built a ski lift because this bridge had uh, 137 wires um, of 120, 127 wires and 137 strands. And they were, had a uh, connecting there and they built a ski lift to bring them up. So this cable starts in, down there, comes up over the top of the tower goes down the other side, across Yerba Buena, and up the other side. It's a single cable. It's connected on each side. And the suspended cables are come off, off of that. Um, so this is the very first cable on the top of, um, and this is the uh, iron worker foreman, Tony, about to do it. And they're going to go, they're going to sit on these rolls. And then, so there you can see the strands, OK? near the rolls, and this was the uh, raising gang foreman. And here again, they were asking about tie-off, because he was famous for not tying off. Mm -hmm. His father was the um, general superintendent, so there was some slack. But if you look right there behind him, he's got both of his tie-offs there. Um, but this is the first cable in all its wires that had to then be configured. So once they got them all in, all 137 of these. Then they had to bring in a compacting machine to wrap around that to change the configuration into. So, <laughs> so that will be closed with this pin around that, and inside are jacks. And then they will end up making the cable look round. Um, I'm sorry? Does it twist the cable? No, it just compresses it. It just compresses it. So, um, so this really is a good overview, right? So you've got the S curve that we had to deal with and all. Um, and they're building, uh, this deck is almost built on the island. There's the tunnel we all go through. The other one is still being built. And they are putting in the suspender cables off of this work cart. Um, and, um, you know, that's a good job, right? <laughs> so they use all these kind of um, chain falls to lift and, and maneuver pieces around. Um, and this is a, uh, here they're um, waterproofing um, some of the connections on. So that's the cable band. That's the main cable. And they coated, so that's, that's the cable once it's been compressed and banded. And then they coat it with this um, gray coat, which is, um, we had to wear white suits because it's, um, it gets all over you. And here are laborers carrying, carrying them down in the fog. Um, you can see this guy's 
<laughs> how much white he's got on it. And that was used to, um, to bind the cable, um, to seal the cable with the gray coat underneath it. And this is the last bridge photo. This is the electricians putting in the light at the highest point on the, uh, this is a deck light on the highest point on the, on the deck. So there's just a few more. Is the Salesforce um, tower our new? Um, so whatever one thinks about it. Um, um, so the earlier pictures, interestingly enough, uh, those black and whites dropping the hammer and stuff like that, is also the Pelly building, which is 560 Mission Street. And they just happened to be putting this beam in on this 52nd floor. And I realized that that was where the guy dropped the hammer from. Um, um, so the raising gang foreman I knew from the bridge was doing this one. So I tried to talk to him about going around the bridge, uh, I mean around the building, and getting different views of the city. So these are a couple of them. This is the 52nd floor. This is the 26th floor. So what they do is they bring, they bring a truckload of iron and lay it out on the deck here. And then the connectors go up. And you can see here now, right, these come up all with um, safety lines. And he's tied off to it there. So unlike 560, there's safety lines on these. They, as soon as they get the corrugated in, which is where I was standing most of the time, then they bring all these other pieces. And as soon as they get that piece in, they'll drop the choker cables, and they'll hook up another piece. Um, but what I, what I find fascinating is the way, you know, you have to position your hands and, and, um, and here again, uh, that's Stanley who was, um, who was uh, we just saw a little while ago pushing 1,700 ton deck section. And this is the radio man instructing the crane. And these pieces are waiting to go up to these two connectors. Um, this is more up towards the top. This is if they ever, ever reopen the transit center. There is, there is the bridge they built for the buses. Um, the white iron, as opposed to the uh, brown iron, was um, for those top floors. Um, this is the top of the building. Um, and this, this, is, this image is kind of interesting. Um, I, on the last day, it was, became more and more difficult to go up there. Um, on the last day, Carlos, who was the raising gang foreman on the bridge and the raising gang foreman on this in the transit center, he said to me, why don't you just come with us, Joe, when we start? I said, OK, what time? He said, 4.30. I said, oh, you cannot even drive to downtown San Francisco and find a garage open at 4.30. And you can't obviously go on top of the building and feed a meter. So, but the 14 mission runs. And when I told the guy where he's going, he let me off right in front of the place. And we went up there. and. Everything was going swimmingly until, so on this, um, see where, this is the retractor. So they hang two floors at a time. So this column goes in, and the retractor, um, for his safety, is there. So he has to go from here, climb over, and climb up this column oh in order to receive this. This guy was up there and slid down the column to get to there. OK? But just as they're about to do all of this, I see out of the corner of my eye a person who did not speak to me in the most polite fashion say, what are you doing on my property? You get off now, and yada, yada, yada. And later, I talked to the two crane operators who were watching it. And they said, oh, Joe's being kicked off the job. Yeah. He's picked up his bag and his lunch. There he goes. Oh, wait a minute. He's done something. So I somehow sweet talked this guy into saying, he's about to climb the column. This is a perfect shot. So this is 1,070 feet. Chris has just climbed this column. He's got, what, half an inch on each side for his foot and one hand. And Carlos has the tagline. <laughs> Carlos who says, I don't do anything anymore. <laughs> I said, no, you only supervise and do all these kinds of things. So anyway, um, that's disconnecting one of these things. Here again, we have the Bank of America, you know, Golden Gate Bridge. So it was the idea of trying to get as much of the city in the background. Um, this looks very close, but you know they're quite far. It's quite far away, but there it is: uh, Alcatraz 
and uh, Ryan and uh, Chris putting in the, um, the diagonals. Um, City Hall. And finally, putting in safety lines on that trip at 4.30 in the morning. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Are you going to make any of these into a book or have they been made into a book? Um, from your lips to God's ears. Yes. <laughs> Somebody sooner or later maybe will do a Yeah, it would be. Um, um, you know, I'm trying to deal with the archive in, 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 different, in different ways. But, yeah, a book would be fun. <laughs> Are you afraid of heights? Yeah. <laughs> no, what I'm afraid of is confined space. So every time I say this to people, they say, oh, my God. And I say, um, you know, and I got that. I got all those things certified to go in there. And down in the foundations, you know, you were in confined space. But I love it up there, and I, I, I hate the confined space. It was true. I lost jobs in the shipyards or was about to quit jobs in the shipyards when they shoved me in places that I couldn't see my way out of. For some of them, there, there were a couple of shots from here, especially when they were building that temporary tower. Um, but that was an unusual thing to, to, to go up there. Um, they were really good with me and said, you know, you know go where you want to go. But, um, um, Did you say you're still shooting with the Nikon F? Yeah. Is it still shooting film? Yeah. Wow. Thanks. But, but much less. I mean, you know, the, the digital over, overtook it. And it was interesting how you, you pushed the exposure and developing and everything else to get the details. Right, right. So, and I hit on something. I, some guy had written up this Delta 400 film and how you could, it could almost look like 100 film um, if you do certain chemicals. And so what did I know? I decided to follow that. And, you know, they came out. They came out pretty good. They got a nice tonal range. My wife was disappointed that she couldn't come today. Are you scheduled to have other presentations like this soon? Well, you know, we do this thing called Labor Fest in the city, and I, we do a, we do a, a boat tour um, every year that goes around to all sorts of various things, the Longshore, the, past the Union Iron Works, um, um, out to Hunter's Point, and a lot of commentary. But they have activities in celebration of, you know, um, um, the 34 general strike, and it's in July. And we often get a venue like the ILWU 34 local hall um, where we could do a slideshow. So I'm going to do that. But I also understand that this um, was videoed or, and will be, would be available. I'm sorry? You used the term, we will be doing this and that. Who's the we? Oh, we, are the Labor Fest people. So they have a lot of different events. And they print a pretty big pamphlet, and it's got a lot of different things, but mostly centered around, around labor, but international labor. And um, my first exhibit, my very first exhibit, which I think had this photograph, and um, was for Labor Fest. And... What happened was that the examiner, it was still the Chronicle examiner, they came and um, this woman wrote a, a story that was in the Sunday. She said, oh, it might be in the Saturday paper, which nope, right? It's, but it turned out to be in the Sunday paper in the business section. And so, um, and that alerted the um, Bancroft Library, who's accumulated about 170 of these, and maybe we'll someday get the archives or something. So. Joe, can you give a plug for your display here next month? Oh, 
Can you? <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have a small display case in the front of the library, and Joe has agreed to bring some of his work. And so starting in uh, June 1st, or roughly the beginning of next month, there'll be a display there. Oh, cool. So I you to check it out. Yeah. I just want to make two comments. One, that photograph in the Engineering World's record, uh, word, um, Engineer record, news. record, was really a game changer. If for any of you who are engineers, there are never people. There are never workers that build these magnificent pieces. And Joe has changed that game. Not much, but a little bit. And, uh, and it's just inspirational to see the humanity behind it. And I know you call that self-portrait, but is that Anna, maybe? It what is not. It, I don't think so. No. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we go back, have a... Have, our paths have crossed in this work life, but I don't think she was. I don't think she was welding in that in that pipe. Okay. Um, but you know, I was completely yeah. freaked out. I mean, I had it under my welding jacket. They were, you know, they were crazy in there. I popped it out and couldn't there believe. Pictures of that era because you really couldn't get cameras in. I don't know how you did that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you an interesting story about that. Anyone else? Oh. Yes. One of the beams. It had always bothered and troubled me that there were no listing down below where the public could see the names of those very workers. Right. You know, I don't think anyone's going to be able to see. Right. So, Which is exactly what Margot was saying. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, with the Salesforce thing, they went completely crazy. Interestingly enough, everybody thought it was going to be a real beam going in the thing. I had already known from the guys that they had put in the last of the iron. So this one was a faux. Okay, and talk about everybody signing it from Benioff to Willie Brown to, you know, you know who. Um, but, but yes, it's, it's, they're very, very little credit ever given to any, which was the whole idea that the exhibit at City Hall for the bridge was called the Bridge Builders um, and was much more interested in, in who built this thing as opposed to what it is. And people can have all sorts of opinions on that, but I wanted the workers to be honored. And um, I just want to also thank Brenda Kahn from, who, from the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, who was very helpful, put up the black and whites the first time, was very helpful in, in, the, um, in the exhibit at City Hall, and then brought it back to the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, where we had a second um, a showing of it. And then to the Bay Model in Sausalito for a showing of about a third of it for a third time. Each time with nice, photo, uh, nice postcards and nice receptions. So thank you, Brenda. Nice posters. And, nice posters, too. and posters. <laughs> yes. Oh, the thing about, I'm sorry, the thing about um, uh, the San Francisco Art Commission, Meg Schiffler, when we did the exhibit, um, I had 85, we had the uh, gallery at City Hall, had 85 24 by 36s and 30 by 40 frames. On, uh, at the, uh, downstairs where the gallery is. But the North Light Court, she took 10 or 12 of them and blew them up to like six feet by eight feet, these banners, which were, ju I said, you can't, you can't blow them up, they'll look ridiculous. But they actually did blow them up and they looked pretty, pretty darn good. And then they made, they took four slices out of four negatives uh, or four frames and turned, put them in the kiosks that were, you know, 15 or 16 feet tall, and you could come up with your cell phone and, and you know, sort of get information on it. So for so the first time since the 34 general strike, as far as I know, workers lined Market Street um, uh, when the bridge opened. Oh, and thank you, Jean, who was, Jean Friedman, who, I don't think I could have done this without her help. Johnny. Hey, John. Hi, John. <laughs> have, you, have you thought of using a medium format camera down there? Huh. I shot with the Pentax 645, the smallest of the mediums. Okay. I mean, 645 Huh? 645P. <laughs> no, no. That one was a little out of my price range, actually. <laughs> I have the old film 645. 
and the 6-7. But I'll borrow yours if you want. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thanks you for all coming. <laughs>